Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. Update from wife had an affair. I'm sorry that my update has taken longer than I liked as I was going to post the next day. Unfortunately circumstances got in the way. But before I do I want to thank everyone who posted their feedback. I read every single one and I took everyone's advice on board. I was overwhelmed to be honest. I really appreciate it. I also would like to point out some things regarding my previous post. The story has been set from just over a year ago. The last post is a catch up to present time. Sorry I should have clarified. So now this update leads up to the present day. As the story is now complete but I'll section each story with an update heading. Update I don't know where to start. A lot has happened since I posted. First I moved back to where I lived. Living with Adam was great but I needed to go back eventually. My soon to be ex is still in our house so I rented a flat just outside of town. I told my wife that I'm coming back and she was happy. However I told her under no certain terms that I would be living with her. So understood. Although she tried the generic we can sleep in separate rooms line. No, I do not want that. I also stated that I will not tell her where I live obviously, even though she tried to find out. She still wants to meet me, as do I. We arranged a time and place. The place was a neutral venue so to speak. It was near the beach where there are people but not too many in case a scene is happening, which I obviously don't want. I want to meet outside with just me and her. I know some of you in the comments said take a friend but I felt that it wasn't needed. But still, I appreciate the advice. I do however agree that I will definitely be recording the conversation which I did. Before the meet I emailed my soon to be ex and laid down some ground rules. And if she didn't abide by them there would be no chance of reconciliation. The rules were simple. Answer every question that I have honestly. 2. No deflection answers like it just happened or I'm not sure etc. I want detailed answers. If she storms off without answering every question it's over. No reconciliation. Answer even if you think the answer will hurt me. Don't be late. If you are, no reconciliation. So we made the place and time. Now it's about waiting to leave to go home to my flat. The next day I caught up with other friends. They treat me like I'm Daniel, although I get it. I got hugs and support, which I appreciated. But it seems, inevitably, that our breakup has spread. Although I question how they know. I only told a handful of people. But my wife inevitably told her family and friends and of course the domino effect would happen. However they obviously didn't know the full details. They didn't know about the texts, pictures and videos. Not even my wife knows that I have them. She is under the impression I left because she was spending too much time with Marjus. She doesn't know about what I have. All she thinks is time with Marjus, husband got upset, she broke it off. I told my therapist about the meeting. She said that I should ask certain questions to give her better insight into what happened. I'll explain that later. It's the day of the meet. I was nervous before but my goodness I am in bits. Not because I want her back but seeing her. And then seeing her means seeing him in my mind. And then I would lose focus and control. Update I drive up to the beach early. Really early. I take in the surroundings and in reflection it was a perfect day. Sun was out. People were taking their morning stroll. I picked a nice venue. Then out of nowhere I turned to see my soon to be ex walking towards me. She was smiling. She looked great. Definitely glammed up. Although she looked slightly worn out and stressed, no sympathy. She approached and tried to hug me. I put my arm out as to say no. She looked at me as in a I understand kind if way. We sat down and settled. She tried to start small talked but I wasn't interested. I had my phone on record and started. Me, when did you first kiss him? Her, the first week, on the Friday me, when did you first sleep with him? Her, the same day on Friday me, where? 
Duh, at his place me, did you ever do it on my bed? Duh, does it matter? I look at her and said about the email. Answer everything I stated. Duh, yes she starts to tear up. Me, when? She basically said it was a number of times I was out. Our neighbors saw him but rightly thought he was a work colleague. They thought nothing of it. She apologized already and kept apologizing but I put my hand out for her to stop. I asked my other questions. Me, did you tell him about me? About you being married? The, yes but at the time it was a blur now my therapist asked me to ask her a specific question. This was it. Me, when you first met Marjus how early was it that he talked about me? The, what do you mean? Me, it's simple. When you talked, what did he ask you about me? Did he want to know how long we were married? Were we happy? Etc. The, after a pause. Yes he did ask about our marriage and if we were happy. Why? Me, didn't that strike you as odd? You met a guy you hardly know and he's asking personal questions about our marriage? The, no I think he was just being generally curious. I didn't think of it as being weird. More of this question's relevance later, after asking a number of small hitting questions. I decided to go for the big ones. I decided to ask her about the videos and pictures. However I did it in a nonchalant way. I referenced a racist attack near us at a local store. Of course if you read my first story you will know about the views of Marjus and his friend. So I went soft and turned it like this. Me, did you hear about the incident last Thursday? The, what incident? Me, the bigots who attacked the shopkeeper and trashed his store. Not before spraying hateful graffiti everywhere. The, that's awful me, yep it is. I can't stand racists. Can you? She looked at me with a confused expression. I didn't say anything. Then it seemed to grasp exactly what I meant. She knew that I knew about the pictures and videos. She started to cry again. This lasted for about five minutes. I pressed. Me, why would you even go near men like that? The, she's red faced from crying. Trying to compose herself. It's not what it looks like or what you think me, what I think. What am I supposed to think? What was it about this man that would make you disrespect your grandfathers in World War II? Or bail out on your friends? And treat me like I'm a piece of crap? At this point she was shaking. She looked at me watery eyed but answered. Duh, he was the new boss in our department. He was open and funny. He made people feel good about themselves. A lot of women liked him. Even after starting he had it. But when he started to take an interest in me, I felt like he chose me me, what the hell does that mean? The, you want honesty and I need to be honest. When we started talking he made it clear that he was only interested in me. I interrupted and said after a couple of days, yes, that's what I'm saying. He had a way immediately to make someone be happy, and even more. I felt great when I saw him looking at me from across the office room. I felt great when he spoke to me saying you're the only interesting person here. Like I said I felt he chose me, me. Me, what? The, I know it's pathetic. I'm pathetic and weak. But you have to understand what it was like. When he first started at the office he was good looking, confident, suave and was just right. He had an aura about him that when he smiled I melted, she continued. He could have had anyone at the office at the time. All the girls wanted him, they all talked about him constantly. I know it sounds bad but I never thought he would pick me me, wait, you wanted to be picked? The, no not initially. I figured it would be harmless flirt or something. But he made it clear that he wanted more than that and that was it. Me, what was it? The, him as being a kind of drug that I couldn't shake off. Again I know it's pathetic but give me a second when he talked to me and giving me compliments I was stunned but really flattered. My confidence went from 60 to 10,000. I thought to myself this man could have anyone but he told me it was me he chose constantly. That he could tell it was me me, what was you? I don't get it? The, he made me feel that I was the one. I was the one that he was meant to he with. I know it's not what you want you hear but I'm being honest continue I said. I can't deny I was attracted to him. It was obvious. 
I see that now me, wait, you thought you were hiding it well? Duh, at the time yes. At the beginning he flooded me with compliments. Other girls were jealous of me. I got a rush from it. I liked it. The more I saw of him the more I wanted. Me, wanted? Duh, wanted to feel like a queen. I know that you treated me so well. I was lucky but Margis at the time was just another level. I got a buzz from seeing jealous women being envious of me. I did ask for honesty. She continued. In my view, I thought to myself I'm so lucky to have this man. But the longer I was with him the more he changed but I couldn't stop it. I asked her what she meant. He was specific in what he wanted. He got to know me but unconditionally he got me to do the opposite of what I liked. Those videos and pictures were his idea. And yes I know his friend and his ideology but I didn't want to challenge him or Marjus because I didn't want to upset him. He had a way of saying that if you can't make me happy, someone else will. He had this do you know how lucky you are? Attitude. At the time I panicked, I went to extreme lengths to keep him happy, wanted to make him happy and nothing else mattered. So at the time I did anything for him, you obviously saw that. I told her of course I didn't about the fantasies. I know. I know. I know. But as I said he was a drug that I couldn't shake off. The more I saw him the more I wanted. He made me believe that you were the bad guy. He made me believe that you were holding me back and that you didn't respect me. I know it's not true, she was in tears again, but that's why I did everything. Everything he told me to do. Even after he was criticizing you I couldn't fight back because I was hooked. Me, and that makes it okay? With how you treated me? Bailing on dinner, bailing on camping? Seriously? Duh, no I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't deserve it because I know how I treated you. I was a nasty bitch to you and I will never forgive myself. But I did it, bailing on diner etc. I knew I was hurting you but I couldn't stop. He kept telling me that I deserve more than you. And that I should be treated like a queen. So the more I went out to high class restaurants, VIP theater shows, the fancy jewelry the more I resented you. But each time he did it, he always mentioned you and your failure. So I obviously bought into it and that's why I was cold towards you. I thought you failed me and he didn't. I know it's not true. But during that time he was influential and I believed everything he said. She continues. It was only when I saw the papers and ring that something clicked in me. I know you don't believe me but I finished with Marjus straight away. I know I don't deserve credit for it but I really am ashamed of what happened. I can't imagine what it was like for you. I know I neglected you, made you feel worthless but I couldn't see it before. I did after I saw the papers. I'm ashamed that I took this vile man over you. I looked at her. I didn't expect her answers but she seemed well sincere. I replied though. Aside from your affair you know what the problem is? That at the beginning you wanted the affair because you said he chose you. You said he was a drug but millions of people get themselves out of drugs. They realize that they have problems and get help. You didn't. You carried on. The only reason you are here is because I am your safety net. And now it's gone. There is no way a spouse can say I love you when you make them feel inadequate. She claims she didn't. No you did. For 11 months you made me feel worthless. As you know I was eating, becoming more reclusive and losing myself. All the while you were going out every night. Going to the gym. Buying new clothes. Being a different person. You came home and looked at me with disgust. During that time you didn't let me touch you or anything. You didn't give me anything but abuse. Duh, abuse? Me, yes you did abuse me mentally. Maybe you didn't think you were doing it but damn you did it. My best friend and soulmate made me hate myself. She's in tears again, it got that bad I was thinking of. I didn't say it but you get the picture. At this point she is crying heavily and apologizing so much that I forgot we were at the beach front. People were watching and I had to tell her to breathe. She got her composure back and kept pleading it was him feeding her the toxic thoughts against me. I did have one last question. Me, do you love him? Duh, no I don't. I know that you won't believe me but I actually hate him. As much as I hate myself. 
After a few hours of talking she left, saying everything was true, I was the love of her life etc. I sat by the beach thinking, thinking about the possibility of her being groomed, conditioned etc. I mean it makes sense. After she met him she totally changed. There was a reason why my therapist wanted to ask that question. Although she can't diagnose Marjus, she thinks he has sociopathic tendencies. Hence why he asked about our marriage. She said. It's clear that he had an agenda asking about your marriage to your wife so early. The signs are there. He did choose your wife. He knew that you were happily married and solid. So he had his new challenge. The challenge was simply to cause a breakup and ruin lives as sociopathic people do. Marjus would never have been with a single girl, because there was no challenge. But with my wife, it wasn't just her he was controlling but me as well, her friends and family. He turned her into everything your wife is against and made sure she did. He turned you, through your wife, into a depressed loner, she continued. That's why you never confronted her after the texts and videos. You didn't have the confidence at all. That's what he and your wife did. He pulled the strings but my wife willingly played along. Sociopaths like to manipulate and control the narrative. When you followed your wife to the parking lot, he probably knew you would follow your wife. If you confronted them there, most likely your wife would take his side there and then. Thus, he would have won. People who have sociopathic tendencies have no empathy. They are driven by seeing others suffer at their hands. Is there some truth to that? Is my wife a victim of a sociopath? It fits but a part of me doesn't care. Well part of me carefully at times. Who was this guy I keep telling myself? I never saw one man come in with such authority and ruin people's lives. But deep down he was the package. He was a boss making decent money. He was 30 but looked 21, great physique and had confidence. That would make women turn right? But maybe my soon to be ex was right in that she finished with him that day I left. Because after I left, my neighbors said to me that Margius kept coming round to my house demanding to talk to my soon to be ex. He apparently did this a number of times as my wife said when we met. He was acting like a physically abusive husband. My therapist said sociopaths cannot accept rejection, especially when they don't have control. My wife dumped him and he became erratic. Why? My therapist said it's simple, your wife chose you over him, lucky me. He manipulated her for under a year and she still had the strength to finish it. That undoubtedly derailed his plans. Update I contacted HR about my wife and him. Turns out other people contacted HR as well. It seems that the affair news is spreading. He left shortly after me and my wife spoke. I don't know where. I don't care. My wife also left before she was pushed. Apparently people are not too happy with her and her behavior, especially her parents. She is staying with her parents and relocating. She is getting help with a psychologist though, which she definitely needs. I still speak to her family and our friends, they try to say that I should meet my soon to be ex again. But that's not happening. She needs to concentrate on getting better. As her family said that M did a huge number on her. The divorce will be finalized in a few weeks. I know some people said she won't sign after the meeting. But I had to go. I had to know why she did it. I had to know. Do I feel better? In a way, yes. My wife was as honest as she could be, I think. The pattern of the affair makes sense. My soon to be ex asked if there is a chance for reconciliation eventually. I have to admit, I thought about it. Even if she is a victim of a master manipulator, how can I trust her? If I took her back all I would be thinking about is him and how I can not measure up compared to him. I would feel second best no matter what. She assures me that it's not the case. That I have always been her soul mate. Even after she said it, my life with her wouldn't be the same. I suppose the moral of the story is that cheating is obviously wrong. It affects and damages the partner's moreso. Cheaters are truly selfish, they only own up if they're caught or leave divorce papers on the kitchen desk. I certainly won't marry again. The damage of the affair has hurt me deeply. I still feel inadequate about myself, that I'm not good enough. 
Although I have been going to the gym again, hiking and camping with friends, I've been trying to stay active, trying to move on but I do have this hate. Hate my STBX for easily falling for him, and him choosing my wife. Why did it have to be her I keep telling myself. But these questions I ask myself are pointless because it's done now. The damage has been done and it still hurts. I still have my job and moving to the outskirts of the town is good. I'm not one of those people who move thousands of miles away, although I get it. But my work and social circle have been good to me and I don't want to lose it. If I relocate it completely then I feel they won and I refuse to be a victim. My therapist said that it will take time. Time to heal, just be patient. Well that's it. There isn't much to update so this will probably be my last post. I want to thank everyone who posted on the last blog. All of your comments I took on board and fully appreciate it.